Hello, here we will demonstrate another aspect of the top-down assembly. In this case, we will, make, we will see how can we do the assembly features. We are going to make a box or kind of a square enclosure with a top which will need to be bolted on a box. However, we are going to make all holes inside the assembly. So, I'm going to start with a square rectangle. Going to build, let's say our box will be a 5 by 5 inch by 5 for the bottom piece. I'm going to extrude for a 5 inch and I'm going to shell it with the thickness of the wall of 1 inch. Remove off the top. And I will save this as my box uh, box uh, features features down. now I'm going to create in a content of the assembly top cover for this so I will create make assembly from part I will bring this part into the assembly and I'm going again to insert what? Insert component, but this time new part. I will click on the top. And I'm going this time to convert entities. And I will convert the four top edges to create a rectangle or square in this case, which I'm going to extrude. Or another 0.5 inch up. Or another 1 inch. So I have created the lid. I'm going to close this part. And I'm going to rename the part. I will call this one box feature slate. And that box feature slit is fixed by the in place mate. Now, I want to make this part to be actually held together by the series of, let's say, four bolts of the four bolts. And those bolts, I want them to be, let's say, quarter inch bolt. And I want to see, can I do this in the assembly content? So you see that I'm not into any particular part content. I'm in the content of the assembly. And actually it is possible to do this using the assembly features. If we see what we can do actually as an assembly features, we can create a whole series. We can create cuts and we can do fillets and chamfers, which will propagate through multiple parts. We can specify if we want this P feature to down propagate to a part file and became permanent part of the part of the uh, permanent feature of the part, or we want it just to stay as a separate configuration in a content of the assembly. So let's make the whole series for maybe a six holes, so for a one or eight holes. <laughs> so I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click on a whole series. And when we click the whole series, as you can see, we have this pane open and we can say the create a new hole. And then it will guide us through the, it will guide us through the steps to create the holes. So if we go assembly features, whole series. You first, we need to click the face onto which we want to make a fog hole and that can be any face and in our case it will be the top face and I'm going to place the four let's say that I just make the eight and again how we will how we are going to fix those we are going to make those three to be all Long by uh, pardon. Where my add 
characters. Okay, let's start it again. So here we are. I want to make the assembly feature whole series. And let's choose that top surface and I will place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's actually XZ. Okay, so I can choose these three points to be a, a be along the C component. However, this did not also flare well. Okay, I will just add existing relationship. I will just add the relationships here that they are going to be. Let's see. If I do these three, they are along X. Okay, that will work. And if those now I will add this three to be also along X, and I'm going to specify distance of one of them to be a point five, and I'm going to specify distance of this to be again 0.5 and I'm going to specify the distance and then nicely arranged and this two should also be along x and should be a collinear with a midpoint and this is a 2.5 actually we can specify this distance is a 2.5 and we only need to specify 0.5 and another point 0.5 here and point 0.5 here and point 0.5 there okay now i'm done with the positioning of the holes Well, actually, I'm not yet. I will specify one more that this distance is a 2.5, and I will make this 2, or I will just specify the distance at the bottom. We also Okay, now we position everything. Now, we need to specify the hole, and that will be the next step. If I click here, the same like initial hole wizard pane open. And let's say I want to keep one quarter inch hole. However, I want it to be a counterboard hole. And that's my initial condition. Counterbolt, standard counterbolt hole. And I can put some head clearance also. Now, the next item that I will choose is the middle hole specification and it asks me is it going to be a true hole it's just going to be a hole and that's fine there is no middle hole and now finally type screw clearance auto size based on the start hole size fit normal and end component is this one and i will choose the hole to be a straight top so I will have those bolts tapped into the walls. So a top drill blind, 0.65 standard, one quarter 20. 
and I'm going to use it with a cosmetic thread. I'm going to click OK. And look what happened. My holes have been now propagated into both parts. So if I do the cross section, look at this. I drill through the both parts. So I avoid doing two times whole wizard because otherwise I will need to do whole wizard on the top part and whole wizard on the bottom part before I put them in assembly or by editing it while they are in assembly. So in a one of, and they are perfectly aligned and I only align them once. So saves a lot of time. Now, if we look at the features of that particular A new hole, out of size, and it is there. Okay, and we have an end component. Okay, so that's all what we need here. We can always get here the help. And the middle hole should always be the Middle part property manager. Yep. Okay, so we click OK. So we have done the holes. And let's say that we want now to make some pattern cut that will go through the center, but we, will, we want also it to be cut at the bottom and not the standard hole. So I'm going to make like the square pattern. On the top by making a new sketch in assembly mode. As you can see, that's the sketch which hangs in the assembly. Let's say that I want this to be a one by one. And I want it to center, so this will be like a 2.5 and vertical. And vertical of a 2.5. And I want this square hole to be both on the top and on the bottom, this square cut. So how I can do this? Which feature I will use? I will go back to an assembly mode and I will under assembly feature, I will choose one of the cuts and obviously in this particular case, it will be which one? It will be the extruded cut. So I'm going to do extrude cut and the direction is right and I will say through all both. Through all. And look what it does. It did it through all. Feature scope. All components or selected components. We can choose if we have multiple components, we can choose which components that feature will affect. In this particular case, I will choose the all components and I will click on the box propagate features to part. That way, when I save this part, this part will also have that hole. It will not just be a configuration inside assembly. And look what I've got. I got hole done in both parts. Again, can save me tremendous amount of time and avoid possibilities of making a mistakes because you do it from the one and it just propagate through all of the parts. Very powerful technique when you start building your own product and assembly. Another interesting assembly feature that we have is the smart fastener. So SOLIDWORKS toolbox. In order to use Smart Fastener, we need to have SOLIDWORKS toolbox library and toolbox utility and age. Okay. 
enabled. And now we can automatically populate this with a standard fastener. If I click on the smart fastener, it will calculate and it will give us suggestion. If I click, I need to click on populate all. And look what it found, that this is the bind head screw, one quarter, ten, 20 of length, 1.25, and that there is eight of them. And auto update length. And we will just click OK. And look what I've got. I've got all of my fasteners placed with a single command inside. Can save a lot of time doing it if we we take a look here. This is exactly what we have for the according length. We want this to be a lower. We can actually change configuration. Okay, so so those are some productivity items that can significantly help and that can make a difference when you go for an interview or when you are designing a part because this can save tremendous amount of time. Previously, we were pulling each individual customer. Now, you can do it with a one click. You can populate entire assembly. And this completes this demonstration.